Ladies and gentlemen, the Amen Brothers at y'all. That was uh, amazing. That was amazing. Hollywood. 
thank you so much. to me 
And the reason I haven't looked at it is, is twofold. Uh, one, because it slows me down uh, to consider it. And, and um, secondly, I, um, if I read a hundred things that are positive, uh, I saw Chino Moreno from the Deftone saying the same thing. You read a hundred things that are positive, you, they just go, you know, you see them and then you just forget about them. If you read one negative thing, it has a way of sticking with you. And, I'll, and that, you know, that just slows me down. So I, I, uh, I just stay away from, uh, this is more important to me. This interaction is more important to me than that. <laughs>
And then there, I never get past that. You know, I can't. And so it, it, it keeps us in that game to think, you know, we have, in a lot of ways, we have to do this. Even if nobody was, was watching or listening, we would have to do it. Yeah, but having so many, so many people watching and listening really affects it. You know, like, yeah. it, it, would be, it would be dishonest to say that it, that it didn't. You know, you mentioned the earlier material, the Pretty Girls and all that. I mean, it's, a, it's, um, it's proportionate to how much life we lived up to that point, and that, those were the priorities. And over these last 15 or 16 years, we have, um, <laughs> check, 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 check. Are y'all hearing this? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's changed from uh, sort of showing off or trying to sh trying to show off into you know you, if you start having thousands and thousands of uh, of interactions with with someone like yourself that has something really with a lot of gravity to say. Like you just, you know, you just were just very brave to mention that about your father. That's, that's a very brave thing to say to everybody, you know. Um, and we take that into our hearts, and it means a lot to us. And we are still very much uh, uh, learning how to process that sort of uh, vulnerability from from a stranger, you know. And so it's it's, uh, it's something that 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 you don't know how to do intuitively. We do our best with it, but. Um, the most simple meaning that we can uh, glean from it is, is that we are obligated in some way to keep doing this because of the, the thing that, we're, that we all feel, you know? And, and we feel very much like we're a part of it, not that we are the center of it. We, we've realized, as it's gotten bigger and bigger, we've realized that we are participants, you know? Like, not sources, we're, we're very clearly just participants. So, it's really important to us. Thank you so much. I know that I, you guys have sang um, hymns a lot, and growing up on hymns myself, I'm just kind of impatiently waiting for when you guys are gonna do like a full album of hymns, or? Wow. Uh, I just thought I'd plant It comes out in May, it's done. <laughs> songs that were pretty much impossible to play at times, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I think we avoid those songs and don't play them on stage. <laughs> so, uh, I, there's, a, there's an ebb and flow for us where certain songs, even old songs, uh, they find their way into our relevance, our sort of circle of relevance, and they come and go, and that sort of makes up where we're at with our set list. And you could, if you look back over for years, I, I look back and realize certain random songs have come in and there's a reason for it, you know, it fits. We need to have some sort of truth behind it, you know, some nugget of truth to be able to push it through. Um, so I don't, a lot of, what I guess what I'm getting at is a lot of times we don't try to force a song that's not, that's not within the realm of our, of our life. But, but the, uh, like the element of it being too personal, I don't think it's stopped it yet. It certainly made some of the, the initial performances uh, more sort of nerve wracking, you know, and scary. Um, but once we got through the, the first time, and once again realized the lesson that we learn over and over and over again, which is um, that, that, we are, that we are okay and that the audience makes it okay for us, we just you know, keep, keep gaining more strength to be able to do that further and further and uh, feel less alienated and, and more included. You know. Thank you. Thank you.
much for putting your vulnerability out there. I, I have a daughter who um, wanted to commit suicide at age eight because she couldn't read. Um, since then, she's fine. We put her through an amazing program, and she's reading. She's in fourth grade. She's now reading at a sixth grade level. But congratulations to her. That's yeah, awesome. to her. The the what you put out there, the helplessness you feel as a parent. Thank you. And I really want to thank Mike and Judd for just capturing uh, Hallie's beauty the way you did. I'm going to actually warn you, patient, we're actually going to take two more, so we're going to take one Let me, here. Let me finish, finish oh, answering that real quick. Oh, excuse me. Uh, just uh, lyrics or music first. I think it's different every time. What I can tell, like, the best I can tell Scott is the lyrics often come first. And I think probably just in the way we have this yin and yang thing for me, generally, it's maybe music is a little, little out in front. Thank you. Thank you. Charlotte, North Carolina. All right. So I do get to Cabarrus County. I'm from Mecklenburg, but I get it. Yeah. Um, I feel like nobody drove down just to see me. We did a bunch of super bad fans here. <laughs>
thank you all, first of all, and I know some married couples get counseling, and my husband and I have eight bit getaways, and truly, y'all are our reason to be able to get away, and that's kind of what we do, so thank you for that. Thank you. And that's um, awesome. I have a very specific question. Seth, we saw you at TPAC um, a few years ago with Jessica Lee Mayfield, and you sang a song that impacted me so much, and I don't think I can find it anywhere. And it was about, um, it really helped me with, as I'm aging a little bit, um, it was about wrinkles and how you should be proud of them and oh, that they are right. from the sun shining on you and all the times you were smiling. Yeah. It's called The Beginning. The Beginning, okay, yeah. thank you. And there's nowhere to find it yet. Please <laughs> help us okay. record it. Okay. Put it on an album. Okay. Thank you. Seth, I'd like you to write a, a song for me called Bald Guy. <laughs> so if you have the time. We've already recorded it. It's coming out in May. Of course, everybody. It's, it's on the gospel record. Yeah, it's on the gospel record. Everybody, <laughs> everybody, of course, everybody wants to keep asking you stuff, but I know you've got a show to go prepare for. Yeah. Which for which for I guess Bad told us is at the ACL Moody 11-ish. Tonight? Yeah, okay. Right. So we just want to thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.